This week, a woman searching Hong Kong for the mother who abandoned her as a baby. This could have been me 60 years ago. <sighs> Many adoptees have no idea about the first hours or days of their lives. But for the woman in our next story, the first two years are missing. The only thing that I know absolutely is that I arrived at Heathrow Airport on the 20th of December, 1962. The airport, everyone's going off to their destinations and coming back. But for me, it's different. This is the start of my life. I have nothing before that. Claire Martin was nearly two years old when she was adopted into the UK from Hong Kong. This is a newspaper article from when I first came to the UK. And that's me, yeah. sitting on the lap of the air hostess. Claire was one of around 100 children who were sent here in the 1960s from Hong Kong's overcrowded orphanages to be adopted by British couples. She's now a successful human resources director with a family of her own, but Claire's still haunted by her difficult start in life. This is the jacket that I wore when I came from Hong Kong so tiny, I can't believe I fitted into this. My mother told me that I was so traumatised that she couldn't put me down for two days. Every time she put me down, I'd scream. It's well known that babies who grew up in orphanages had to rock themselves to sleep. And I rocked myself to sleep till I was 18. Claire grew up near Liverpool and had a happy adoption. This is Mum, Dad, me, obviously but she struggled to fit into the predominantly white community. It was a mixed marriage, but Dad and I were the only Chinese people around. As soon as I went to school, it was very obvious that I was different from everybody else. I was stared at a lot. I had a huge need to belong, and there was one occasion I remember when I was about six or seven, and I prayed to be white. And I prayed really, really hard that night. But I woke up and I was still Chinese. At the age of 12, Claire's adoptive mum died. And she began to wonder about her birth mother. It's a huge void not knowing who you are and who your parents were. It's very difficult to survive without roots. <laughs> It's 56 years since Claire arrived here at Heathrow as a toddler. Before that, her existence is a blank. She doesn't know anything about her birth family at all. And with records scarce, searching from thousands of miles away is unfeasible. Good to meet you. Thank you. How are you? So in this case, Claire's best chance of finding out anything is to fly back to Hong Kong to appeal for information. This really is one of the toughest searches that has ever come our way. Mm. I know that our search team felt that finding anything more about your mother is impossible mm. in the UK, and the only way to do it was for you to be out there on the ground in Hong Kong, where it all started. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. No, I, I, just ha I just have to hope that I find somebody who lives there, somebody who remembers something. Yeah. Even if I can't find my birth parents, I would be happy to find any birth family. I'd like to meet somebody who looks like me, sounds like me, thinks like me, laughs like me. I haven't got anybody like that. And now's the time to do it. I'm 58. If I don't do it now, anybody with any memories 58 years ago will be gone. Well, I wish you all the luck in the world. Thank you. Claire has travelled nearly 6,000 miles to the land of her birth. She's brought with her the only document that sheds any light on why she ended up in an orphanage. I've got my birth certificate here. And it says believed 
to have been born on or about 21st of December 1960. The certificate also reveals why her birth date is uncertain. Rather heartbreakingly, it says I was abandoned. Um, it makes you want to cry, actually. Claire's parents' identities are unknown, but the certificate does list the address where she was left. Found abandoned at the staircase of number 61 Berwick Street in Kowloon. People often ask me, could I forgive my mother for leaving me? But I think she was in such dire and desperate circumstances, she didn't have any choice. Today, for the first time, Claire's going back to the place where she was found. I've no idea what this building is, but this gives me an opportunity to go to find the place, see that staircase, and maybe just kind of feel a connection between whoever it was that left me there. 57. 61, oh, flipping neck. So it's flat. The record says there was a staircase, so I'm imagining there's a staircase behind that door. This could be it. Oh my god. Baby things. My life must have begun here. Yeah. I mean, this is sheltered. I very much got the impression she wanted me to survive because she left me somewhere. Probably the most comfortable place she could find to leave me. Yeah. That's what I like to think. I wonder whether she thinks about me. This is amazing. Absolutely magical. It's like coming home. Claire Martin was abandoned in Hong Kong as a baby. Now she's returned to try and find her birth family. Obviously, I would like to find my parents, but I would be happy to find any birth family because it would give me a sense of belonging, which I haven't had. I'd like you to meet a very special lady now. Her name is Claire Martin. Because Claire was abandoned, she has almost nothing to go on. Anybody who thinks that they may be related to me, I would love them to help me out. So she's launching an appeal across Hong Kong media in the hope that someone will come forward with more information. I want to say I love them and that I've missed them. Can you help me, Cheng Bang Wo? If my mother had me when she was very young, it's possible that she's still alive. But it's nearly 60 years ago, so we're asking somebody quite elderly to remember something that unlocks it all. 60 years ago, Hong Kong was going through a period most residents would rather forget. Hong Kong, Britain's island colony, clinging to the flank of Red China. The city was flooded with starving refugees from mainland China, desperately trying to escape a famine, which killed an estimated 30 million people. Most of these refugees have no hope beyond day-to-day -day survival. Hundreds of children were abandoned, just like Claire the lucky ones ending up at one of the city's orphanages. Claire has traced the name of an official on her birth certificate back to Po Liang Cook, one of the largest orphanages at that time. It's the final clue she has to investigate. I brought my birth certificate. Yes. Because I think I was here. OK. It's signed by the matron of Oh, and cook, yes. Exactly. Oh. Fortunately, our archives 
contained a photo. And right here is Matron Young. Oh, is that her? Young Sui Ching. So she was responsible for taking right. care of all the well-being of the children in right. Bolanco. That's amazing. So I was wondering, is there any evidence that I was here? Unfortunately, we couldn't find your file. But sometimes some children, they might come to Polo and Cook, right. and we might not have a written record of them. Right. But uh, we do have uh, the pictures of children in Polo and Cook in the 1960s. So these were all my contemporaries in 1960? Exactly. Oh, oh, look, I have a memory of fiddling with this catch. Oh. And the whole front falling down and it felt like my whole world had collapsed. And I'm pretty sure it was one of these cots. Yes. So that would have happened to me while I was here. Yes, these beds were very common back then. Yes, yeah, exactly. That was my earliest memory. Today's dormitories are in the same rooms as when Claire was a baby. all those cops. Oh. oh, extraordinary. This could have been me 60 years ago. There's just something about it that rings a bell and it's just really strange. I've got more information. I know about the matron of Napoleon Cook, whose name is on my birth certificate. For me, it triggered memories. But Claire still knows nothing about her family or how she came to be abandoned. However, just as Claire's trip is drawing to a close, incredibly, there's a response to her appeal. Hi, Claire. Hello. Nice to meet you. Nice How are to you? Meet you. Yeah. Oh, gosh, I'm very well. For generations, David Chaw's family worked in the same building where Claire was found. My parents run this shop in 61 Berwick Street. Yes. And I remember when I was just 10 or 11 years old, and they found a, a abandoned child, what they call it. Oh, uh, here? Right here. And I was more of just looking. You I was really... curious. You know, I'm sure you were. To see what happened. Yes. Yeah. It, there's a landing, and then you go up the staircase. Right. Yeah. And I was left there? Yeah. The baby was crying a lot, so my mother called the police. OK. And the police car came and picked up the child and put her yes. into the uh, police car and drove away. Oh, that's, that's extraordinary. Yeah. And nobody saw my mother? No. For me, it, it, you are the first person that I have met oh, really? that has known anything about this. Oh, my God, I can't believe it. I've actually met somebody who'd seen me over there in 1960. Absolutely incredible. Thank, Thank you. you. After all the emotion I've been through, at last I've had some good news. I really do feel that an important part of my search has happened. I feel closer to my birth family now. But I would be really disappointed if this is the closest I could ever get. So I'm just going to keep working at it until I find something. I'm not giving up. I'm going to carry on. As Claire leaves Hong Kong, she has one more card to play in her search for answers. Her DNA. It's now 11 months since Claire Martin returned from trying to find her birth family in Hong Kong. In that time, she's taken DNA tests, and we've added them to several online databases. Unfortunately, her closest matches are too remote for us to trace her birth parents. But she does have a number of hits, all blood relatives. The remarkable thing is, not all Claire's DNA matches are in Hong Kong. Several of them are based here in the UK. And incredibly, one of them, Joanna Battershell, is already a friend of Claire's because DNA 
is not the only thing they have in common. Hi, Joanna. Hello. How are you? Good, thank you. It's amazing to meet you. It's just incredible. You've got a DNA match with Claire. It's a match, yes. I did the DNA test, and of all the people that came up, I can't believe Claire's come up. And it turns out that we're distant cousins. <laughs> we flew into Heathrow on the same flight. So if you look, there's Claire and me right next door to her on my father's lap. Wow. And there's a photograph of us being prepared to come to England. This is Claire. Mm -hmm. And I believe this is me. That's incredible. Yes. The chances are that we were babies in the same orphanage and we would have had cots in the same nursery room because we are the same age. We're both turning 60 this year. And now you realise you're related to each other. Yeah. Well, that's extraordinary for you and this is going to be extraordinary for Claire. Yes, exactly. Claire found Joanna eight years ago through a group for Hong Kong adoptees. They've been friends ever since, but Claire has no idea about their biological connection. And Joanna isn't the only relative on the DNA databases. We've gathered 19 people from all over the UK who have a match with her. Claire has had no way of tracing her family. And apart from her own daughter, she's never knowingly met one single person she's biologically related to. So it's gonna be amazing for Claire to meet some blood relatives. We've told Claire off camera that sadly we haven't found any close family, but she knows we do have a surprise for her. Oh, fantastic. It's lovely to meet you. Are you ready? I am. All right, let's go. First of all, I just wanted to say I am so sorry that we haven't found your birth parents. I'm not surprised, but it would be wonderful just to find somebody, who, even if they're distant related. Mm. Well, you do have some DNA matches on the database and we want to take you to go and meet some of them. Oh, good Lord. <laughs> I'm going to meet somebody who's actually related to yes, me. Yes, you are. Oh, wow. Having never met a single relative, Claire's about to walk into a whole room full of family. Joanna is likely to be the biggest surprise for her friend. She's going to see me and sort of like, well, what are you doing here? <laughs> of all the friends that I could have been connected to, she's so lovely and I'm desperately looking for similarities in our faces. Lu Yi Mi is not only a distant cousin, but also has shared experiences. I'm quite excited actually to meet Claire. But I was adopted out of China, so I absolutely understand her desire to find her biological family. And 14-year-old Katia is Claire's nearest DNA match. Thank you. Ready? Yes. Are you nervous? I am petrified, actually. Yeah. But in a good way. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Well, I'm only going to take you this far. All right. Um, so I'm going to say goodbye to you here. Okay, Have then. a really oh, good time. I can't wait. Mm, well. Good luck, Claire. Thank you. Bye. I can't tell you how extraordinary it was just having a huge room full of people. That was a real surprise and a delight. So that picture of us 
together as little babies and oh, finding out Joanna and I are related to each other. It's just unbelievable. We've always said we're sisters in spirit. Well, so where are you from? Originally, I'm from Shanxi, but I'm adopted as well. Oh, you're adopted as well? Yeah. No. That's amazing to meet you. Yeah, yeah you too. Louis, he's looking for her birth family as well, and we found each other. <laughs> I was born and raised in Cornwall. And you're my closest relative. Yeah. Nice to meet you. It's extraordinary that I went all the way to Hong Kong looking for relatives and, in the end, found them in the UK. Thank you so much, everybody, for coming to meet me. I was just overwhelmed. I feel as though I've got a family now, which I never had before. And it's a big family. To the family! <laughs> <laughs>